Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and we're going to start on our, uh, I'm going to call it a traveler's notebook, because that's probably what I'm going to make out of it. Uh, I'd rather have one of those as a mini album, because I am all time keeping notes, as you can see. I have my notes for this in my little traveler's notebook. So we're going to, I've had lots of people ask, did you use a stencil on this front? Did you use a die? What? We're gonna go over all of that. And then I've had some people that have asked, how are you gonna bind it? We're gonna use the elastic to put in here so that we can put our signatures on the inside. And we're probably gonna put about four signatures in here. I think it will hold that many. But I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to make this cover, make it really flexible. I like that part and make it durable so you can throw it in your purse. If it gets wet, it's not gonna hurt, all that kind of stuff. Now I've got my mat down because we're gonna do some spraying and different things and I don't wanna get that all over the place. What I have done is I have used this craft board and if you don't have craft board, just use a, a cereal box, whatever you have. This comes from Cricut and I will link it below if you wanna purchase some of it. When they have it on sale, it's a really, really good deal. It's not as thick as a medium weight chipboard but it's about the thickness of a cereal box. Maybe a little bit thinner, something like that. But it is where you can cut it with your regular trimmer, you can score it, that kind of thing. That's what I like about it. Plus it's really durable. But like I said, use what you have. If you don't have that, you can use regular chipboard, medium weight, you can use cereal boxes. You can take two pieces of a thick cardstock and glue them together, use that. So use what you have. All right, this piece is cut at 10 by seven. And I have gone ahead and scored and I put my score lines in black so that you can see them because all that's gonna be covered. But you're gonna score on the long side, you're gonna score at four and a quarter and at five and three quarters. Now, all of these measurements will be over on my blog with photos of these things. I'm trying to make a PDF file where I can share it with you guys where it'll be a, a PDF cut file. I'm trying to do that. You know I'm having to work on it. Sherry is helping me with that, so hopefully she will help me get all of that up and going. But right now, we're gonna go forward with this. Now, like I said, this does score well, so I'm not gonna worry about it cracking or anything like that. It scores really, really well, as you can tell. So that is gonna be our cover right there. Nothing to put together, it's all gonna be in one spot. Now what I'm gonna use is some light modeling paste. Now this is the opaque matte. Like I said again, use what you have. Um, I will link this below, but if you don't want to buy this, if you don't wanna purchase anything, then use what you have. If you have uh, a thick gesso, if you have a thick Mod Podge. If you have something that's a little bit thick, like a cake frosting that you can use on here, that will work perfectly. But if you wanna purchase this, I will have that link below. It's not very expensive at all, and I've had mine for years, and I'm still using on it. What I use normally is just a craft knife. This is a little plastic one that I got picked up somewhere for I think a dollar. But if you don't have that, you can use a credit card or an old card of some kind. You can use a piece of chipboard. You can use lots of different things. Just something that's kind of stiff so you can put this on. Now I'm gonna use this for my inside. This is gonna be my outside. So we're gonna work on the outside first. What we're gonna do, put some of this on here. And we're gonna put it pretty thick. Now I saw, um, I think I saw Jennifer from Genevieve Designs doing one of these the other day. I will link her uh, video if I can find it again. I think it was something like this, I'm not sure. I just glanced at it. I don't have time to watch a lot of videos, but I just glanced at it, but I think she was doing something similar to this. So I will link her video below. Go over and check her channel out. She's really, really good. I have talked with her in a lot of different places. She's a sweet, sweet lady. Her and Tom, her husband. So we're just gonna put this on, like I said, pretty thick. And just put it all up to the way up to your edges. 
Now, you want to go back and you want to make sure that you kind of make some lines in this. Don't smooth it out real smooth. Make you some lines and some different textures in there. Because if you smooth it out real smooth, then you're not going to have that, that uh, texture that we got on this one. So let's go ahead and do the back side. And I catch myself trying to smooth it out, so I have to stop. <laughs> I had done some of these years and years and years ago. And I used to do a lot of these. And then I kind of got away from them because I, I didn't know if people were really interested in them or not. I love them, and I, I try to make them all the time for myself. But... You know, you, there's a lot of traveler's notebooks out there, a lot of different tutorials and different things, so you never know what people are interested in. And I try to put something up that interests everybody. That's why I try to do a variety of things. But if y'all are interested in these, I would love to do them because they're, this is my first love right here. Mixed media and making notebooks and things. I love my notebooks. All right, I'm gonna make sure I have all of that covered really well. And it doesn't hurt if you got it a little thicker in one spot than you did in the other, that's fine. No worries. It needs to be inconsistent. That's what we're looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and close that up. Now, for the butterflies and the little gears and all of that, what I used was, let me grab them. I used this butterfly die, I think. Yeah, no, it was this butterfly die. Let me grab it. I used this butterfly die, and I will link it below. And I think I had it linked on that other video as well. And then I used these gears, and this is from first edition. It's a ton of different gears that you can get. I use these dies and I cut out all these pieces out of the same craft board. So you could cut them out out of cereal boxes and use that. And I'm gonna try to take some of this out of here. So we're gonna put, oh, let me smooth that out. I made a flub up there. We're gonna put these down on here. I'm just gonna put butterfly there and just press it in. Put a gear here, press that in. There's another little gear. Take out some of these pieces. If your dock, uh, dial machine won't cut them well, just run them through a couple of times. It'll work. I'm not going to worry about taking out all the pieces out of all of them because the outline is what we're concerned with anyway. And I'm going to put some on the edge because I'll trim those off when it dries. Let's see. There's a cute one right there. Put this butterfly in here. Let's see. Let's turn him this way. You just lay them wherever you want them. Just lay them all around. I think that's enough on there. I do. Well, let me. I got another little butterfly right here. We'll put this one down here. And then I have another little gear that will stick up here. Just don't go over where that, where your crease is for your um, scoring there. Don't go over that part. And then I'm just going to drop that little circle in right there. So that's what I did. And then I took my modeling paste again and I just put another coat on top of them a very very light coat because you do want these to see show through so you just want to put enough on there that'll hold them down that's all you want to do a very light coat and I, I kind of go over them all and then then go back and wipe some off because once they start sticking, they don't need a lot on there. So 
So if you don't like the butterflies and the gears and that kind of thing, just use some kind of something that you do like. Use a, another die or just some pieces of ephemera, whatever that you have that might be a little bit thick that you could put on yours to give it that dimension. Because we'll do more decorating on the front anyway, so. This is just gonna kinda be in the background. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and just kinda pull a little, <laughs> pull a little of that off. Can't talk today. I'm just gonna make sure that I have enough on there that'll keep them stuck down. Because this does act kinda like a an adhesive and you put it on. Okay, then I'm just going through and putting some lines in this just to give it that texture that we want. Okay, so that's what I did right there. Now I'm going to let this dry just a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll put some sprays on there. Okay, now I did dry this just a little bit with my heat tool just because I'm very, very impatient about waiting on something to dry. But I will tell you, you will have to, once you spray this, you're gonna have to set it aside and let it dry probably overnight. It'll still feel a little bit tacky tomorrow, but don't worry about that. That's what we're gonna use the collage podge for. And I think I spelt that wrong when I put it on the, when I answered everybody's questions on it. but. It'll still feel a little tacky tomorrow, but that's okay. Flip, then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the inside before we start working on all of our pages. Now, since I've already got mine made and I made mine more teal and less um, gold. So I use teal and gold sprays. And these are some old sprays that I've had probably three or four years. They're Color Bloom from Prima. And this one is called Deep Teal, and this one's called Empress Gold. Now, I'm gonna make this one for Melina, and she loves deep, earthy tones, so I'm gonna put more gold on hers and then a little bit of teal, because she loves teal, too. So, we're just gonna, what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna cover my computer up, because I definitely do not want any sprays on my computer. So, hold on and let me cover my computer. So, I'm not gonna have a monitor for a little bit. So we're going to I'm going to move all of my other stuff out of the way too because sometimes these sprays go a little bit wild. Now, if you don't have sprays, use your inks or you now when if you're going to use distress inks, you're going to have to wait until this dries almost completely before you use them because anything that you wipe on top of this, you're going to be able to move everything while it's still wet like this. But if you have um some re-inkers on your distress inks, then you can put them in a little spray bottle with some water and use that on there. Or if you have some of the uh, Tim Holtz sprays, you can use that. This is just something that I really like because it has the shimmer in it. Of course, you know me, I like the bling. But you can use any kind of color. If you have watercolor, use your watercolors. If you have paint, use your paint. Put a little bit of paint in a bottle with some water and spritz it on there or drip it on there with your brush. Lots of different ways you can color these. You do not have to have these. This is just something I've had for a while, so I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna hold it back a little ways and then I'm just going to start hitting it with the spray. And you see I have to spray from the side. If I don't, I get the big drips and I don't want the drips. So let me get a wipey. That's why I said I had to cover everything up. And then this one is the teal. We're gonna put a little bit of this in different areas. Now it's gonna look a lot darker when it's wet than it's gonna look when it dries. So don't worry about that part. Just get some good color on there. Oh, this one's about empty. I've used it so much. Okay, we've got our, see how that all those textures and everything come out when we spray that? And it's like it, it, I don't know, it just brings it to the top. I love that, I love that effect. 
So we're going to have to set this aside and let this dry. I think I'm going to go in right here with a little bit more gold. And maybe right here. I don't think we touched any right there. Uh, about out of gold. The good thing about these, though, I can put a little bit more water in here. And I can use this. I can add more gold to it. So I just need to add some water. Because see, it's still got plenty of pigment in the bottom. Okay, I think I'm going to leave that just like it is and let it dry because this will be better for her. She don't want the, the darkness. She'd rather have more of the gold. So we're going to leave this, going to set it aside and let it dry. And then we'll come back and work on some pages to go in our album. Okay, now what I had used in the past to make my pages is just a very thin, um, like a watercolor paper or a drawing sketching paper is what I used before to make my pages but I saw Jennifer from Genevieve Designs and I'll put her link below she used this and said that she really liked the paper so I thought well I'll order some of it and see what I think about it so because I knew if she said she liked it it had to be a good paper so I ordered some of it and I I'm with you Jennifer I love it it is a very nice paper. It holds your water and all your mediums very, very well. So what we're going to do is just tear some of these out. And it has a little bit of a, I think you can see that, a little bit of a dot design on it, which is great when you want to do some journaling and things. Now, I think I showed you the papers that we had already colored. And these, most of these are from this paper. I've got a few that are just from a sketch pad. So if you have a sketch pad or if you have some paper laying around, even copy paper, if it's kind of a thick copy paper, use that. You do not have to have this. These little pads are not very expensive, but if you, I'll link them below. But if you don't want to order these, then, then use what you have in your stash. I don't want you to think you have to go out and order a bunch of things in order to do this. Now again, I'm going to cover up my monitor so I won't be able to see you for a minute. I do not want to get this ink sprays on my computer. Now, I have down some tissue paper. And the reason I put down tissue paper is to soak up all of this ink that I'm going to be spraying on here. And then I'll use my tissue paper in my journals. I don't like to waste any of that. So, we're going to use some different colors. So, I am going to get some ginger coral. I love coral as well. Shake those up. This one is Plumeria, and then this one is Iris. So let me shake these up, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'll take you off right here so you can't hear the sound because it has a little ball inside of it. And we're just gonna spritz the paper, spritz the papers. I can't even talk. Spritz, spritz the papers <laughs> with a little bit of that purple. Then I think I will use a little bit of this ginger. I just wet it a little bit. You're st when this dries, you're still going to be able to write on this. Don't worry about that. You're still going to be able to do your journaling and everything on here. But if you don't want to do it this heavy, then don't. Just do it real, really light like that. There's a good light coat right there. And then I, I hang these up by the edge and I let them dry. But right now, I'm going to bring it right over here. Here's my little hanger. Okay, and then let's do one with this plumeria. Sometimes when we get down low, I have to hold them up to the edge. And I think I want to put a little of this. This is called Empress Go. No, that's not the one. This one is Storm Cloud. I think I'm going to put a little of that in there. But see how good that holds the ink and it doesn't tear? So that is the good part about it. Let's do one more like this. I think I want to do this in some blue. This is Fairy Pond. This is 
pretty color. But I'm gonna do it light because it's really dark. And then I'm gonna flip it over and over. And if it picks up some of that other ink off of there, that's fine with me, I don't mind. No, I don't wear gloves. I get ink all over me, and that's okay with me. I don't mind at all. So then there's another one. And I don't know if you can see the shine in these or not, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Now I'm going to set my papers over there too because we're going to use these papers that I have sprayed. Now, we're going to go to watercolor. Now, I know a lot of people have watercolor, and if you don't have watercolor, then use, if you have watercolor markers, if you have watercolor pencils, whatever, just use what you have. Anything that'll put color on a page. So, I have just spritzed these, and these are the, and I can't pronounce the name, I know. Uh, well, I don't even see the English version, but I'll list them below. And then I just have a brush. This is probably a number, let's see. This is a 25 millimeter. It's just a brush that I use a lot. And what colors are we going to put on here? Let's use some of this light blue, and I'm probably going to have to get it wetter. And you can spritz your paper if you want to. So that your colors will mix well. We're just going to go over this. If you get something a little bit too dark, you can pull some of this color off. I have my fan on above me and it's drying really, really fast. Or I can move it. Should turn my fan off, I guess. But it's very, very humid here today. So we'll just spray that some more. Just want to get a little bit of blue coloring in there. Because it's very, very hard to start off on a stark white piece of paper. I know, I have that problem. Spray right, some more, see how good this holds the water? Like I said, Jennifer was right, it's absolutely great. some of that other color off of my paper and I don't care. I don't mind that. So I think we're going to do, it's hard for me to stay away from a teal. I'm not even going to clean my brush or anything. I'm just going to go across this, put more water on it, let it move. another sheet. Okay, so wet our paper. And on this one, I'm just going to drop in some different colors and see if we can get that to move around. Bride, isn't it? Okay. 
But if you just water it down, then it'll be fine. And you could even hold it up and let it drip if you want to. Let it drip off of there. That leaves some cool effects too. Or you can press it down on your tissue paper and it pulls some off and then put that that you just pulled off on the other side. I love the texture of these after they dry. They feel so good. And I even go in there on my hands sometimes and mix it up. So now we're gonna use a coffee dye stamp, and this is it's just a let's see, I think it's a Prima. Yeah, it's a Prima Clean Stamp, and not sure what it's called, but it's just coffee circles. And we're gonna use some of the Distress Oxide, and I'm just gonna take this directly to the stamp. I'm not gonna worry if it stamps good or bad or what. It's just gonna stamp. You can certainly use a block if you want to. I'm just smearing it around. <laughs> just as if we had a coffee stain on there. So I will put it on a stamp block and see what we get. Let's use the other one. Let's use this one. So that is that. Flip it over. There we go. So that is just your coffee circles on that one. Then we'll use one of the Tim Holtz. This is Perspective is the name of it. We'll use this one a little bit. I want to use it in brown too. This is a Vintage Photo, the Distress Oxide. And no rhyme or reason because this is going to be cut up so you're not really going to see all of those little edges there i'm just going to ink the inside of it there we go and what else can we Use one of my favorites, the big butterfly. Let's see if I can get it on here. I'll ink it very lightly. This will be cut up so you're not going to see all of those pieces there. So that is just stamping. Now we're going to try to bring the Distress Oxide ink directly to your paper and put a little bit on there. We're going to spritz it. I 
then I'm just going to take my paper towel and just blot that up, blot that water up. And it gives it a cool, almost like a coffee dyed paper without having to do the long process of coffee dyeing. And if you want to spread some of those areas out a little bit more, you can use a baby wipe. And it will spread them out a little bit more. So there you go. We'll do the other side. Let's do this side in old paper. Let me show you what effect you get if you put something under there. See how it kind of picked up that gear? <laughs> the outline of it anyway. My, my ink pad is very, very juicy. And then we're just going to spritz that with a little bit of water. our dry towel. Just go through, blot that up. Just like that. And when these dry, we'll have some really cool textures and be able to add our pictures on here, write, stamp, whatever else we want to do with these. We'll lay these aside and let them dry. Those will be dry tomorrow when our cover is. But let's see what we got here. Let's bring these back over. Just to show you how, look at the, I love that sound. Isn't that neat? And see, all of these, I can still use my black marker on and still write on them very, very well. So we're gonna cut these up and get them ready to make pages out of, and then we'll be right back, and I'll tell you all of the measurements. Now for your pages, you need to cut them at eight and a half by seven. So I'm gonna try to cut quite a few of these at once, hopefully. Maybe not that many. Since they're textured. And save these pieces. You can use those. And then this way we're going to cut it eight and a half. There again, save these pieces. You can use those. So what you're going to do then is you're going to fold these in half. And they're going to be, they're going to start your signature. Let me grab this one back. So just fold them in half and put them inside each other until you get your signature as thick as you want it. Now, I would say probably, oh, let's see how many I've got here. I've only got four, so probably about six or seven pages is all you want to put in one signature. You don't want them too thick because once you add all your photos and everything like that, you don't want them to get so thick that you can't um, close your book up. And then we will have to go back and trim the edges just a little bit once we get all of it ready because you can see when you fold it over, you have a little bit of extra there. But that's no problem at all. So we're gonna make uh, probably two more of these to put in here and then and you don't have to use just these dyed papers. You can use anything. You can use um, regular cardstock, the pattern paper. You can use anything that you have. I'm gonna mix some thing, different things in with these. I'm just cutting these right now. I think we can add a couple more sheets to that. So I'm just gonna add this one and this one. Yeah, that's going to be thick enough right there for one signature. 
see how many pages we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I will be slipping in a few different things here and there. So that's going to be plenty thick enough by the time we get everything done. And I will probably put these in a little bit different order as I start putting them together. But that is how you need to make your pages. Now, like I said, you can put, you can insert some pattern paper in here if you want to. You can insert some uh, tissue paper. Um, let me see what I have over here. You can insert vellum in here. I'll probably put some of vellum in here, some different scraps that I have. There's lots of different things that you can put in here and we'll go over that tomorrow when we start putting the book together. All right, I think that is all on the video today because I don't want this to be too long. So tomorrow we will um, start inserting our pages and our signatures. We will put those together and start doing our signature, putting our pages in our book. So, and we'll make up probably three more signatures to go in here. Our other papers, papers will be dry by tomorrow. So we'll be ready to put all of this traveler's notebook together. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button.